In this video, I'd like to walk through a standard scanning strategy using the Shining 3D Aoral Scan 3 wireless intraoral scanner. So we've got Tom with me here today. So I'm going to pop his details into the software. And we'll select that it's an orthodontic case purely just to allow us to scan the upper arch, the lower arch and the bite. In fact, it's the lower, the upper arch, yes, first the lower arch and then the bite. If we did get things mixed up, there is a swap scan button within the software as well. So if you do find at some point you've scanned the lower when you should have scanned the upper, it's OK. We can click on the soft, the swap scan button. So before we start scanning, I just want to talk about some of the ergonomic aspects. I'm obviously scanning Tom now. He's in a seated position. This works really well from a patient's point of view because they're in a dental chair. They're expecting to be tilted back and the cortisol levels increase and so on. So it's a very comfortable experience for the patient. So much so that we often hear from patients, you know, is that it? When a scan happens, they're expecting a lot more to, to happen. So it, it can be a really good patient experience. The process, the principles are the same if the patient's sitting up or if the patient's lying down, we're going to follow the same scanning strategy. And what's really, really key in all aspects is that this screen for this, with the computer is in a very visible and ergonomic position. So I have Tom sitting here. Ideally, the screen would maybe be positioned here so I can see Tom and the screen in the same line of sight. I've got the screen positioned here today. It's no, no big deal. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. What we don't want, though, is the screen to be behind us. So we're trying to scan and we don't see what's going on or we're trying to scan and watch what's going on in the screen and then we can't focus on what's going on in the patient. So when we're scanning, of course, we want to focus on the software. We also want to focus on the patient as well. So we're, uh, let's, let's get going. So we're going to scan the upper arch first. So we'll turn the scanner on. We'll get into position and you'll notice then as I scan, I tend to use my left hand as much as I use my right hand. So my left hand is there, it's for guidance, it's for retraction, and it's to help me to stabilize the scanner as well. So we always, always like to start off with a good occlusal scan, and then we roll over, we'll scan the buccal surface. Now when we're scanning the buccal surface, I like to scan, come out to the midline, reposition, start on the other side, and roll over, scanning the buccal surfaces, and come to the midline. On the other side and there's a couple of reasons for that maybe just pause the scanner for a moment just to talk through that the reason i like to do that is that it's more comfortable for the scanner to, it's more comfortable for the patient to have the scanner coming out of their mouth on the buccal aspect rather than going in so if we try to do it in one sweep we have to turn the scanner around and and push back in again so that can be challenging from us as an operator trying to get that somersault motion going it can be challenging for the software and it can be maybe a little bit uncomfortable for the patient as well so keep it easy for everybody start at the back sweep around come to the midline start at the back on the other side sweep around and come to the midline and you'll notice as i do so as well i tip the scanner typically about 45 to 90 degrees as i do so and it, it allows the scanner to keep the lip out of the way so we get back into position, we'll turn the scanner on. So we'll start it on a molar and we'll capture the palatal aspect. And all of the time I'm watching upper left hand image of the software and I can see exactly what the software sees, exactly what the scanner sees. I can see there maybe a little bit interproximally on the incisors, missing that detail there. That's fine. And I think I've got pretty much everything. If I want to capture the palette, we start at the front and just sweep from side to side, nice and steady. And the fact I'm using my left hand to stabilize the scanner, that's also ensuring that I'm not going to get any, into any tricky situations with the patient in terms of gag reflex and so on. We want to maintain a certain distance of the scanner from the, from the palette. We don't want to be too close. We don't want to touch the palette. We don't want to bounce off the tongue either. So we, you can see we've got a great scan there. We can verify that by rotating it on screen how we do that. Double click the scanner, tip the scanner up to select view mode until that little option goes solid blue. And then we can use the scanner to rotate the image. So there's a couple of things there. So distal on the upper left seven, we could probably do buckle distal on the upper left seven. We could probably do it a little bit more detail there. And around the incisors, capture some glove. So it's the fact that my glove was touching the incisors, the software, the AI function, 
did think that maybe that was some tooth surface. So that's okay. Maybe a little bit more gingiva around the incisors as well. So upper left seven, we need to capture a little bit more. So into position. There we go, nice and easy, a little bit more of the gingiva. So depending on what the indication is, if we're getting a retainer made, we want maybe want a little bit more uh, gingiva getting um, a liner. So it's really important th to note there is that as I was scanning around the incisor, the software recaptured that incisor ledge and said, hey, that bit of finger that was there previously, it shouldn't be there. And the AI functionality got rid of it. So we're finished with the upper arch, really happy with everything we've got there. The lower arch, we're gonna double click the button, this pop-up menu appears. And you'll notice I'm just point, holding the scanner nice and steady and stationary. I bring, tip the scanner to the right and it allows us to move on to the next stage. What's really important to bear in mind using that functionality is that the scanner, it, it's, it's looking at angular or it's reacting to angular movements. Okay, so we tip the scanner up, tip the scanner down with the button facing upwards all the time. Okay, sometimes people do this or they do that and it, it, the software doesn't quite recognize it as you might expect it to. So keep the scanner nice and steady, tip it up, tip it down, tip it from one side to the other side. So we're ready to go. Let's scan the lower arch. Again, Tom, good man. So again, index finger in to retract, but it's also giving me a little guide and a rest to rest the scanner on. So we sweep around. A good occlusal scan will always have good occlusal detail and maybe a little bit of buckle and a little bit of lingual detail as well. It's not a race. We're not trying to capture the fastest scan ever. What is important is get around the scan, get around the arch, capture as much detail as we can in that single pass. And then we roll over buckle. And we sweep around, come to the midline all the time, keeping an eye on that screen to make sure we're capturing what we expect to capture. And then we'll start off at the back on the other side. Of course, we got this audible clicking noise from the software as well, which is great feedback. It's the software telling us, keep going, we're capturing data, we know what we're doing, everything's good. You can see it got a little bit of finger there, so we'll rescan over that area. And the software should eliminate that. So we double click, tip the scanner up. And we have everything we need. Okay, so I might just go over that little area there where we do have some some of my glove. So white gloves, I think actually, I think it got rid of it automatically. Double click, rotation move mode. Yeah, so the software did recognize that that was floating tissue or floating detail and it got rid of it. Super, now we're ready to double click, tip the scanner to the right. We move on to the next step which is recording the bite. So before turning the scanner on, we get the scanner into position. So we might ask the patient to open up, get the scanner into position, a bite. And again, using the scanner as the retractor. And once the scanner is in position, and you can see I'm using my left hand here just to stabilize the scanner, stabilize myself with the patient, push the button to start scanning. And as soon as the software brings the arches in together, push the button to stop. And we do exactly the same on the other side. And bite together again, please. And there we go. Now, if at this point, and particularly if it was a, a, a tricky situation and you felt, you know, maybe an anterior bite, a ca ca capturing the data at the anterior region was gonna help, be helpful, well, we can click on add one more bite scan. And in this situation, we turn towards me, please, Tom, bite together as you normally would. And then we can just do this anterior scan. Okay, and if it's a case that for one reason or another, the software wasn't able to do the alignment, we have an auto al a manual alignment option and we can select some points on the lower arch. And 
the corresponding points in the scan and then we do the same on the upper arch pick one two and three and it's, it's fairly rare when this happens but at the same time it's good to see it happening in this situation and we know how to address it and deal with it if it is a case that we want to capture so we've captured the, the, the bite let's say centric occlusion if it's a case that we'd like to capture a posture bite or centric relation we can do that and we use the the feature here that we have an additional occlusion so to record an additional occlusion we we'll use the multiple jaw relationship option so let's click on that and we'll add a new option and we can edit the name for that and we will call it protruded okay and now we're going to scan again now this time we're going to ask Tom to bite so if you can bring your lower jaw forward far for, as far forward as you can go you go any further that's it you're going to hold it just like that now in this case we may stabilize with some wax or some Duralay or some kind of jig or, or a leaf gauge and just hold your bike like that please excellent and then just again hold it like that and we'll do the other side and we can see the software has brought the two arches in together in that occlusal relationship and we click on finish and then the software then finalizes all of the, the, the scan information and processes it. We have our finalized images, then we can either do more work with or send on to the lab or export the files for, for use in another piece of software. So that's the basic scanning strategy for, of course, in this situation, we've got full seven to seven arch on the upper and lower, no edentulous spans on, on this young man in this particular case, but for sure it goes, the, the technique applies in all situations. Yes, if we have an edentulous span, we might need to revisit that area, capture into proximal surfaces and so on. But thank you, Tom, for your uh, uh, involvement today and for being a model. And as always, I hope you found the video useful. And as, as always, if you have any questions or would need any support, please contact our team on support at esmdigitalsolutions.com. Thank you and goodbye.